good afternoon and welcome to another exciting program, The Realization of a Dream, the coming on stream of the Argyle International Airport in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. This is an awareness building and sensitization program produced by the Agency for Public Information in collaboration with the Office of the Prime Minister and Temple Cable Network. today at the official residence of the Prime Minister of St. Vincent and the Grenadines by the Prime Minister himself, Prime Minister Gonzales. Prime Minister, good afternoon and welcome. It's good to see you. Thank you. Well, Prime Minister, of course, the program The Realization of a Dream was really dubbed off of your concept. They come in on stream of the Argyle International Airport. This is your baby. How do you feel? Oh, I feel fantastic. I'm excited about the opening on February the 14th. I first of all have to give thanks to Almighty God for bringing us thus far and for helping us to shape a modern gateway to the world. I have to thank the Vincentian people for reposing the confidence in me and with the vision to plan, conceptualize, implement this project through the ULP government. And we had a lot of good people with us doing it. Um, Dr. Matthias, the head of the International Airport Development Company, the workers and technical people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the professionals. Uh, and then of course our friends overseas, Cuba, Venezuela, Trinidad and Tobago, Republic of China and Taiwan, um, Turkey, Libya, Iran, uh, Mexico, Austria, the Republic of Georgia, um, other friends in different institutions. Caribbean CARICOM Development Fund and so on and so forth and it has been a creative package clearly a project which is costing to build about 730 million dollars Eastern Caribbean and then you have to have some money to equip it and you start that without any money but with resources of people of land Land for land, we sold some of our land to acquire the land out of the Argyle. And then international, international solidarity. It's truly an international airport because we have had Cubans and Venezuelans working there, and Taiwanese and Barbadians. We even had a couple of people came from mainland China to set up the, 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 the heavy equipment, the, the stone crusher and lots of talented Vincentians and a number of other professionals from in between, some British. And it's, 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 it's a truly international airport. And I remember Jeffrey Cato, who, who died on the project, and then there's a Venezuelan lady who was a scientist when she went back to Venezuela on holidays. She died in a plane crash. And one of our workers died in an accident on site. Thank God there were not more persons who lost their lives and we hail the families of those who, uh, who died. The Vincentian people overwhelmingly gave support. You had occasional dissonance, but that is expected in a thriving democracy. This is a what was thought to be an impossible dream, elusive. 
and the problems were huge. The terrain, four mountains or, or hills four to be brought low, four valleys to be filled, a river to be spanned, 134 middle-income houses to be removed and caused to be built elsewhere, uh, the, the, to move a cemetery and a church, for starters. And uh, there are a lot of people who told me that I shouldn't waste my time and energy on something which is impossible to be achieved, that it would only come to grief. But here we are. It's finished and we have to now make it work, all of us. And I'm appealing to Vincentians of all different political persuasions. Let's stop the bickering and let's make it work. We have hotel rooms to fill, we have more hotel rooms to build, we have to, the cultural artists, people in popular entertainment have to up their game, the craftsmen and women, the manufacturers producing this and that. Um, the taxi men, people who are providing services of one kind or the other, the tow operators and so on and so forth. The entire infrastructure and goods and services for, for, for tourism. We bring the people here to sell them our goods and services. Of course, Sabota season, the farmers and fisher folk are very happy that you're going to be able to, to send fish, fresh fish to particular destinations. You'd be able to to have um, the, the lobster, kong, fish, um, fruits and vegetables, and so on and so forth. So it's tremendous opportunities are available with the building of this airport. And then of course, um, Glen Beach and his team at the Tourism Authority are working on the flights. We have a, a few months in which we'll fine-tune certain things. But I'm optimistic and I'm happy with the direction in which we, 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 we are going. And God is good. Well, Prime Minister, I want to speak about that optimism you just spoke about. Uh, earlier, just before we got started, you were speaking about the benefits uh, which we will accrue from having the International Airport in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. If you can just share with our viewers now, what are some of these benefits? Well, I've mentioned some of them there, the question of more tourists come in to sell our goods and services to them. It would facilitate that. It also would facilitate us moving goods and services from here to consumers overseas. Increasing jobs, increasing wealth. It's as I say, it's a modern gateway to the world. We are opening ourselves further to the world. It's not a virtual opening up, but an actual. We do the virtual through the internet, but this is an actual one. And, uh, you know, at the, at the beginning, even well-meaning people told me that I, I shouldn't really embark on something which is going to bring nothing but grief to me, that we wouldn't be able to accomplish it, that it would divert me from things which are achievable, that there's no way in which we can build an international airport, particularly when they see we didn't have the, the resources. But I knew where the resources could come from, and I knew what resources we had. And we just married them creatively, and uh, it took a little longer than we anticipated but so did the temple to house the ark of the covenant uh this is this 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 is this of course is this speaks of the hope and determination persistence and confidence by you the prime minister the person who is really behind this project well you know i was inspired by david and solomon in the, in the book of chronicles as inspired also by Nehemiah. Ne Nehemiah had a, a real amazing project. That project was to rebuild the city walls around Jerusalem, which was 
broken for 112 years. He had the Jewish people with him. He had some materials at hand. But they were always detractors, Sanballat and Tobiah of the Ammonites. But he persisted, the united people, properly led, doing things creatively and the interests of people, will always prevail over negativism. Learned helplessness will never triumph over a hopeful, determined, and focused people, which is what we have been. And we are a good-natured people, and we are a serious people. We are people, we don't go in for glitzy stuff, you know. We are serious people who look at substance. It's true that style is okay, but style really can't put bread on the table. Style really can't create the jobs. It's okay to have the style, but you also have to have the substance. And that is something which I grasped you know, in my growing up, how people get things done, who built this country. And I stayed within that particular tradition and had a sense of optimism. Look, inside of the public service, there are well-meaning senior public servants who came to me. I said, Prime Minister, men before you have spoken about this thing. It came to naught, studies were done. Why don't we just accept that this is something which can't be done? And it was very interesting to see how the agnostic, the, the, the the atheists in relation to the airport, if I may use that phrase, the non-believers, became agnostic and finally became believers. The airport is a metaphor. It is a symbol that a colonial imposition, a mental slavery, cannot define for us the limits of our possibilities. We are the ones who have to define the limits of our possibilities. And the possibilities from my perspective, my perspective, those possibilities are limitless. And to achieve the fullest extent of the possibilities at any given historical moment, we assess our strengths and weaknesses, our limitations and possibilities. There are some people who emphasize limitations and weaknesses and not strengths and possibilities. But I emphasize possibilities and strengths without in any way disregarding the fact that there are limitations and weaknesses. But to have those limitations metamorphose into possibilities and the weaknesses be transformed into strengths us to move forward that is the way always I have addressed issues in my life that's what I saw in my community that's what I see as Prime Minister that's what I see as parliamentarian and always remembering simple simple words but profound in meaning in the preamble to our Constitution that is our nation is founded on the belief in the supremacy of God and the freedom and the dignity of man and woman. Everything else flows from those things, you know. Every single thing else. And our allies, our friends, shared that particular vision with us. Well, Prime Minister, what do you want to say in particular, especially to our regional and international viewers at this time? Well, I want, I want them to come and see what we have accomplished. I want not just the regional and international, I want our nationals overseas to come and see what we have accomplished. And they have helped us accomplish it too, by helping to raise money and by also contributing for families' welfare through remittances. Now, when they're coming, they're going to see an airport which is located at a most beautiful spot. First, 
there is the, on the eastern side, northeast, southeast, is the beautiful Atlantic. We had to put sea, sea defenses to that Atlantic. On the western side, the undulating valleys and hills, mountains, lush green. The place is serene. Most of the time, blue skies, like a cathedral with a tropical sun for steeple. You don't get it better than that with a 9,000 feet runway, 2,700 something meters to accommodate big jets. A safe airport already given approval by the regulatory authority, the Eastern Caribbean Civil Aviation Authority for all flights local, regional, international. You have a terminal building which is beautifully designed but with a Vincentian and Caribbean sense and sensibility. You go inside of the the departure hall. You see at the roof not just a sanitized roof but you see beautiful mahogany from our forests specially selected the, the the design committee had the vision to do that including people like Moulton Mayers and Rhonda King and Eloise then you look at the eastern side you see the stone, stones from the site, from our rivers and our quarries facing the east. The stones are put there by Vincentian masons. They call Vincentian masons, some people, the Italians of the Caribbean. I prefer to call the Italians the Vincentians of Europe when it comes to stonework. And then, on the, at the departure area, you see the green. Also, some green designs on the tiles on the floor. All that is to connect with the greenery on the west, in the hills and in the undulating valleys. When you arrive, you see blue with similar designs on the, the tiles reflecting the sea. All these are details which were looked at, you know. And the same thing with the colors chosen, the blue for the sea and the skies and the green for the, for the, for the, the hills and the undulating valleys. And when the landscapers are finished with the landscaping, you will see how that green merges of the, the, the building, the color, merges into the green of the landscaping. And it, the, the terminal is user-friendly. And we have a separate terminal of high quality for the, the, the domestic flights, those between Grenadines and, and St. Vincent. You have the air bridges. You look at the air bridges which connect which would connect with the big jets. As you come out from your, your plane, your international aircraft, you're not seeing air bridges which are enclosed by no view on the outside. You see it's transparent so you can see the, the landscape on the eastern side of the, build, of the, the terminal building the sun and the tropical warmth, they welcome you. It is a feeling, a particular sensibility. And we as we are receiving people now in larger numbers into our homes, we have to keep our home cleaner. We have to lift our game. And we are lifting our game, not for sure, but to increase 
the benefits of that airport to our lives, to improve our lives for the future, create more jobs, create more wealth, which means a better standard of living. That is what all this is about, to come to terms with our external environment more capably, in our own interest. That's it. Well, Prime Minister, I'm certainly looking forward to February 14th, not just because it's Valentine's Day, yes. but of course the Argyle International Airport will be you know, open. You know, you know Argyle has a reputation historically when the road was towards the sea as a lover spot. It's a place for lovers. And, and this is a gift of love of the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines to, to, to ourselves. It's, 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 it's just beautiful, fantastic. And what can persons expect on the 14th of February when the spotlight is on this beautiful country of ours? What is going to happen is this. On the evening of Monday the 13th, the the, the Liat flight which is coming in at around 9, 10 o'clock. The passengers will disembark and Liat will move from Arnesville to Argyle and park there. And at 6.15 or whatever is the time the first flight going to Barbados, that would be the first action at the airport with the passengers. And then I expect the flight from Trinidad to come. I expect if, if, if all goes well, that the charter from New York with Dynamic would land fairly early. Sunwing will come about 3.40 our time. Um, Cal, I don't know the specific time when Cal Caribbean Airlines would come out of New York. So that, and we're having a lot of visitors who are coming with their planes. We're having visitors, I don't want to tell you their names, some of it for security purposes. I don't want to tell you, but lots of visitors are coming, people whom we have invited to come. I'm sure Vince Engines are going out there from early. The committee headed by Julian Francis making all the arrangements to make sure, and you'll hear more about it, to deal with the thousands and thousands of people whom we expect to be there because it's a public holiday. There'll be music, there'll be some entertainment, and there'll be speeches. So Louis will speak. Um, Saboto and Camillo will speak. Rudy Matthias of the IADC will speak. Gart Saunders, chairman of the management company for the Argyle International Airport, will speak. Representatives from Cuba and Venezuela will speak. Hopefully, someone will come from Trinidad to speak if Prime Minister Rowley doesn't come. Certainly, we hope that the widow of Patrick Manning, Hazel Manning, our dear friend, will come. Um, I will speak. We will have a wonderful day. We will have a beautiful day. It should be one of the better days. And I think God will protect us and help us on that day. Prime Minister Gonzalez just told us that February 14th is going to be a beautiful day. I certainly look forward to February 14th and I hope you do as well. This has been another exciting edition of the realization of a dream, the coming on stream of the Argyle International Airport in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. My name is Dion John on behalf of the entire production team, including producer Bernadette Ambrose Black, videographers Antonio Richards and Clinton Bostwick. Until next time, have a wonderful afternoon. Bye.